part two. So I printed out the instructions in English now. I can't actually read Japanese, but uh, so this is great. Just gives you a brief description of the kit. Um, oh, it talks about its auto bias feature, which basically means you can just swap, swap tubes around. Um, yeah, it gives you an idea of, of the kind of stuff you need to make the kit. So we've kind of got all this stuff ready. And this gives you a general list of what you get. This kit does come with these, the 6L6 GC um, JJ valves and obviously the input valve, the ECC82. So, you know, if you wanted to use some valves, you've just got some valves, you could sell them on eBay or something. Uh, yeah, it just gives you a brief listing of everything that you're supposed to get. I won't go through it all, I think it's got tick boxes, so you can go, oh yeah, got those, got those, line them up, but we won't worry about that for the moment. Let's just get Cracker Jack in and building. So let's get the PCB. Probably about 1.6 mil thick PCB. It's good quality, well wrapped. Stickers here to go on the back, a warning for high voltages. Pop that one over there. Some more stickers for the back. Sort them out at the end. This looks like a correction note, which we should have in English. Very sure. So, yeah, that's steel. Mild steel chassis. But the price, you mustn't grumble. So, before soldering, follow the cut lines on the PCB and break into eight pieces using the edge of a table. Oh, that doesn't sound great, that sound, does it? The handy wrench here. So, <laughs> that's wicked. So you can use it as a bit of a spanner. just like to be the main board. So the board is kind of, is, is written in English. Which is great. Cool. And it discusses checking orientation. Mount the parts with, the, with this mark on side B. This is side B, side A. So when you come to populate your PCB, most of the parts go on side A. I mean, that's pretty obvious because it gives you kind of your markings here and your resistor value numbers, cap numbers as well. There are a few points that you have to solder the parts in on the other side, but they have this denoted by this sign. B, caution, check the side, so you don't make a mistake there. So let's get the bag of components. It's hardware. It's more kind of switchy hardware. So it looks like the components. These looks to be the feet. Oh, well, there's another board there. In there. On this unit there is an amendum, which is here. So it just looks like a couple of resistors. Oh, well, a resistor there and a cap there. So it's uh, going through the resistors first. So let's do that. There's a bag of resistors and caps. 
So the bags aren't labelled, but I should say the number of them and how they've done it makes it easy to understand which goes which, which goes where. So also it gives you the colour code of the resistors. There's only a handful of values actually. So this one, which is to me to be 330k, is here, R9. Here, I'm going to have a pen. So I don't know what I'm doing. Take them off as I'm going along. 17. <laughs> with resistors, well, with these ones anyway, they, there's no tell you a specific way around, they go either way around is fine. Always mount them to the body. Well, the no values anyway. That's 17. I'm going to tick it every time I put one in. R2930. mistakes during this process, so take your time. You don't want to put the resistor in the wrong place. And 60. 